Welcome, I am Caladorn, and this video is about some of the things that I wish that I knew before I first played Ixion. Let's get started. You can toggle Resource Indicator Visibility by using this button up here, or alternatively if you do not want the indicators shown all the time, you can press and hold the Alt key to display the values, with the values disappearing again when you let go of the Alt key. The science ship choices have predetermined outcomes and are not based on RNG. There are videos on my channel that goes through what each choice does based on the chapters if you do not want to save and reload to explore the various options yourself. If you do want to explore yourself, a helpful tip is that just because a choice takes longer than another or requires resources, this does not automatically mean that you'll get a good outcome. All buildings must be connected to a road. But it is sufficient that even only one of the arrows showing where a road connection to the building is present for the building to be connected to the road network, as shown here, for instance, with my docking bay. Docking bays have an internal storage of up to 300 items. These items are not shown in your resource hub up top and have to be sent to a stockpile before they can be utilized by your station buildings. But the most important thing about this is that you do not lose anything stored in your docking base when you do a vol jump. So this is a great way to have a storage of resources ready to use while you scout for resources in the next system you jump to. You can unassign ships from a docking bay. This keeps the ship in storage and you can reassign it to any docking bay later as you need. Ships that are in storage are brought with a tycoon through vol jumps and when you enter a new sector you may want more miners and science vessels early on, and then as you explore the sector you may want to use more cargo vessels. You will get an optional quest early in the game to open another sector. I usually turn that request down and open another sector later, because opening a sector requires resources and workers that will be transferred to the new sector. You must deal with population management between the sectors, resource management between the sectors, and you also get a penalty to your hull integrity that stacks with each open sector. So, before opening a new sector, carefully assess whether you need it, whether you have the population and resources you need, and how quickly you can build more EVA airlocks to maintain your hull integrity. The probe scanner shows you various signal strengths that will tell you how close you are to a resource or a point of interest. When a signal turns green, it means that if you send a probe to that location, you are guaranteed to find that resource. Before you prepare a vol jump, double check that you have enough resources in stock, as when you arrive in a new system, you have zero visibility in that system and you will have to use probes to locate new mining nodes, points of interests, and so forth. That is a very bad time to be starved for resources and can quickly lead to a cascade failure on the Tycoon. Remember that any resources that are stored in your docking base are not shown in the top resource HUD indicator fields, but will still be available. Remember that technologies can be upgraded, but keep in mind that science is a limited resource, especially early on, so choose your technologies and upgrades carefully. A good suggestion is to upgrade the tech lab research early on to get more passive science income. The passive income from a non-upgraded tech lab is so bad that it literally makes no impact. While this is something that you will notice easily when you play the game yourself, I still thought it is useful to mention for those of you who like to plan ahead, especially given the space limitations that is part of the challenge of the game. The default crew quarters on the Tycoon have a footprint of 3x3 three three and house 15 people by default without any research upgrades in crew quarters. The tier 2 quarters, optimized quarters, have a footprint of 6x3 and house 40 people by default. The tier 3 quarters, domotic quarters, have a footprint of 6x3 and they house 60 people by default. The cell housing, which is a separate technology, must be built on a wall. And they have a footprint of 2 by 8, but they can house up to 125 people without research upgrades. However, this housing is so low quality that you'll get unhappiness and instability from using it, 
so plan carefully if you choose to use these living quarters. Use the Resource Management Administration to automatically send and receive resources between your sectors. I balance alloys between the sectors so that I have enough basic building materials available, and food is something I consider critical to balance between the sectors. Remember that food requirements depend on the individual sector population, and you will need one food per 10 population in a sector, so balance accordingly giving your high population sectors more food than the low population sectors. Also, keep in mind that for a resource to be available for the resource management, it must be in a stockpile that has power and workers, and resources in your docking base are not transferable directly. Mining ships do not carry resources back to the Tycoon. Your cargo ships are responsible for picking up the resources that your mining ships have mined. You can set each individual mining ship to have different priorities based on what you want them to mine, and likewise for your cargo ships. The fleet management screen is accessible both from inside the Tycoon and from the planetary system map, and here you can set your mining ship and cargo ship priorities. You can both left click and right click the uh, resource priority icons. Left clicking goes from high to medium to low, while right-clicking goes from low to medium to high. Monitor your hull integrity and keep the number here green. You will need EVA airlocks with hull repair enabled to maintain your hull integrity. Your EVA airlocks will spend alloys each cycle to maintain your hull integrity, and you can hover above the hull integrity bar to see your current modifiers, what is depleting your hull, and your contributions to hull repair. Note that I have 200 irreparable hull units. These are from bowl jumps, and each time you perform a bowl jump, the number of irreparable hull units increase, which means it becomes more and more critical to ensure you have ample alloys at hand for your EVA airlocks as you progress through the story. Pay attention to the trust in the administrator level. Each sector individually contributes to the overall trust level, where you can hover over the mood indicator down here in each sector to see the individual sector breakdown. If the overall trust level shown in the top indicator is positive, having some sectors being in the negative is not dangerous to the overall trust level. However, a sector that is in the red will face issues such as potential worker strikes, acts of sabotage and so forth. There are several ways to manage this, housing your inhabitants and building memorials, and alternative life centers will be the early game ways to maintain a happy population. Later on you will get DLS centers where you can set sector policies to for instance use more propaganda, extra rations and such, and you can even balance things with giving the inhabitants less food but use more propaganda to weigh up for it. For those of you who played Frostpunk, you'll probably recognize these metrics. Hull integrity is very similar to the reactor integrity, and trust is the same. And just as you would lose the game in Frostpunk, so will you lose the game in Ixion if either the hull integrity or the trust drops to zero. If the hull integrity drops to zero, the tycoon goes boom, and if trust drops to zero, the population will mutiny and your career as administrator has come to an end. Memorial buildings give a passive stability effect to your sectors without requiring power nor workers. They have a footprint of 7x7, which means it is important to plan accordingly. And each of the three memorials have a specialization that can be researched as an upgrade to the memorials tech. And as you can see here, the Marduk memorial will provide additional stability to sectors specialized in industry. The Genetic Conatus memorial will provide additional stability to sectors specialized in food and the Lunaclism Memorial provide additional stability to sectors specialized in population. Sector working conditions is another metric that is important to monitor. Your goal is to keep this at optimal for each sector, as poor working conditions increases the risk of accidents, breakdowns, acts of sabotage and fires. Too few workers in a sector is the main contributor to poor working conditions, and a good way of dealing with this is to power off and on buildings as you need their output. And there are events in the game that will influence your trust levels permanently. 
The main negative contributing factor to this is DES, or Destroyed Earth Sickness. You can see that I have three of these permanent minus one DES modifiers shown here. Some of these events are unavoidable, as they are part of the storyline, and the three shown here are such modifiers, but you can also get these from research ship choices, staying too long in a solar system, and so forth. You can easily see whether the resources on a resource node are mineable or ready for pickup by the icon in front of the resource icon. If the icon is a drill, like this one, it means that a mining ship needs to mine the resource. If the icon is three crates, like this one, it means that the resource is waiting for a cargo ship to pick them up. Resource nodes have priority buttons, and there are individual priority buttons for miners and cargo ships. This is useful to ensure that your mining ships and cargo ships do not travel too far away from the Tycoon, so you get a steady supply of the resources you need. Another thing you can do is to click the Avoid button if you don't want any ship to go to a resource node or planet or other point of interest. The Avoid button is useful both for making sure that your ships do not spend too much time in transit, picking up something you don't want them to pick up right now, but also to avoid space phenomena like space weather that can kill crew members and even destroy your ships. Don't forget that you can move the Tycoon. While you are introduced to this early on for story purposes, it is easy to forget that it's also a useful way to reduce the travel time for your fleet. When you move the Tycoon, you need batteries in all your sectors to retain power. Blackouts will cause a hit to your trust that you'll have to gradually build up again with positive sector stability. When you click a planet that you want to move the Tycoon to, you'll see how many cycles the movement will take, so before you move the Tycoon, go to your sector view and hover above the available power, and then the numbers shown on each on the sector under the battery sec section here is how many cycles of power that you have battery power for. So, if I wanted to move the Tycoon to Tatra V8, that would take me 3.6 cycles as shown earlier, which means that my Sector 2 would only remain operable for 2.6 cycles and then suffer a blackout for one cycle. I hope these tips were of use to you, and that if they were, that you will consider leaving a like on the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel. Keep an eye out for more tips videos on my channel. I also offer videos with breakdowns of the research ship event choices at each planet, as these are predetermined and not randomized, as well as a Let's Play series for the game. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you success in your endeavor to save humanity.